Discussion on Catecholaminergic Polymorphic Ventricular Tachycardia or CPVT. Catecholaminergic Polymorphic Ventricular Tachycardia is a potentially life-threatening cardiac channelopathy with propensity for polymorphic, typically bidirectional ventricular tachycardia with exercise or emotional stress. Please subscribe to this channel for future updates. Click on the subscribe button. Press the bell icon after that for all updates. Various genotypes of CPVT have been described ranging from CPVT1 to CPVT5 as per the online Mendelian Inheritance in Man database. The first one to be described was CPVT1 with mutation in cardiac rhinodin receptor. A review on CPVT was published by us in Heart Rhythm in 2005. The gene responsible for CPVT1 is located on chromosome 1. It is a mutation in the cardiac rhinodin receptor gene. The inheritance pattern of CPVT1 is autosomal dominant. CPVT2 is caused by mutation in the cal sequestrin 2 located on chromosome 1. Autosomal recessive pattern of inheritance has been noted with CPVT2. CPVT3 has been mapped to chromosome 7. It is an early onset lethal form of CPVT. Mutations have been documented in the TCRL gene. The gene responsible for CPVT4 is located on chromosome 1 and it is the CalModulin gene CALM1. It is inherited in an autosomal dominant pattern. CPVT5 is caused by triadin gene mutations located on chromosome 6. The disorder can occur with or without associated muscle weakness. CPVT5 is also transmitted in an autosomal recessive pattern. Triadin is a protein of the calcium release complex. CPVT is initiated by conditions which increase catecholamine levels like exercise, emotional stress or isoprotonol infusion. In its classical form, bidirectional ventricular tachycardia appears during exercise and disappears on rest in a rate dependent fashion. The onset is mostly in childhood and most cases respond to adequate doses of beta blockers which is the sheet anchor of therapy. Some cases which do not respond well to beta blockers may need implantation of an implantable cardioverter defibrillator. But the ICD shock itself may trigger off an electrical storm due to the associated stress. Hence, patients implanted with an ICD should also be given beta blockers to prevent such episodes. Another option for reducing the number of shocks and the consequent electrical storms is programming a longer detection interval. This will avoid shocks being given for self-limited episodes of ventricular tachycardia but has the potential to delay treatment in case of ventricular fibrillation. Another reason proposed by proponents of longer detection interval is that the ventricular tachycardia in CPVT is initiated by triggered activity while ventricular fibrillation has a re-entrant mechanism and may respond better to the shock. Estimated mortality of untreated cases ranges from 30 to 50 percent before the age of 20 to 30 years according to family studies. About 30% become symptomatic by the age of 10 and 80% by the age of 40 years according to one report. It may be noted that CPVT cannot be diagnosed by a resting ECG alone. Even though exercise testing is the most important investigation in a suspected CPVT, up to one-fifth of them may not develop ventricular ectopy during an exercise stress test. Sometimes CPVT may be misdiagnosed as long QT1 with a normal QT, which can occur in long QT1 during certain periods of time. But genetic testing is certainly useful in differentiating the two. A pediatric and congenital electrophysiology society multi-center retrospective cohort study of CPVT patients diagnosed before the age of 19 years and their first degree relatives has been published. Genetic testing was done in 194 of the 236 subjects in the study during a follow-up period ranging from 1.4 to 5.3 years. 60% had RYR2 associated CPVT1. 
CPVT2 due to homozygous CASQ2 mutation was found only in four patients. All had history of life-threatening symptoms. Another family potentially affected with heterozygous CPVT2 included three subjects of which the proband had life-threatening symptoms. Her relatives had exercise-induced ventricular bigeminy. An unusual point noted in the study was that in one quarter of the symptomatic patients, cardiac events were precipitated by only normal wakeful activities. Here are the first set of references on CPVT including our review article in Heart Rhythm. Second set of references are here. These are the third set of references on CPVT. Fourth set of journal references on CPVT. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel for future updates and click on the bell icon for all updates. Thank you.